When you think about metal and crime, your mind probably goes to a very specific kind of place. You'll think of things like Pat O'Brien, Cattle Corpse's now former guitarist, who charged at a police officer with a knife while shouting, the rapture is coming, all while his stockpile of weapons and human skulls is on fire. Or how about Tim Lambesis of As LA Dying, who tried to hire a hitman to kill his wife. And then there's Varg. So when people heard that the administrator of the Crazy Ass Moments in New Metal History Twitter account was facing potentially 25 years in prison, their expectations were completely subverted when they saw that it wasn't for any kind of weapons or murder or anything like that. Rather, it was for securities fraud. So for today's video, let's take a look at the he said, she said bullshit of Holiday Kirk going to jail. This video is sponsored by NordVPN. You ever go to watch a movie or listen to a song and then you notice, hey, this isn't available in my region, but it is streaming somewhere else. For example, I recently wanted to watch the classic Italian horror movie Demons, but it's not streaming on Netflix in the US. It is, however, streaming in Romania. So I go to NordVPN, travel to Romania, and boom, we got that classic Claudio Simonetti soundtrack. NordVPN has thousands of servers worldwide, and you can use them on all of your devices, up to six at one time. To get started, just go to nordvpn.com slash wang. Through November 29th, each purchase of a NordVPN plan through my link will get an exclusive discount as well as four free extra months. It's the best deal on the internet, and it's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Just go to nordvpn.com slash wang. The Twitter account Crazy Ass Moments in New Metal History started in April of 2022. It was one of many accounts that was inspired by Crazy Ass Moments in American politics. After that account went viral, it would wind up spawning a bunch of different gimmick accounts documenting Crazy Ass Moments in various niches. With Crazy Ass Moments in New Metal History, of course, documenting Crazy Ass Moments in New Metal History. In addition to posting classic new metal music videos, new entries into the genre, and bands whose new metal list is still hotly debated, you'd also get posts like, the time Darren from System of a Down was interviewed by a magazine at a festival who had no idea that he was Darren from System of a Down. A baby whose parents intended to name her Cora but accidentally named her Korn. Fred Durst showing off his Ayanami Ray figure. Over the course of the next year or so, this account grows a sizable following. A mix of people enjoying the nostalgia, cringing at the old days, and also a lot of people getting into this kind of music for the first time. And as the account gains traction, Holiday Kirk, the man behind the account, starts to branch out into other ventures. He's writing articles about new metal on his website and eventually grows out into a news site called New Metal Agenda with an accompanying podcast in which musicians, both new and old, address the new metal allegations. Because, you know, the label new metal has always had such a negative connotation that you even had bands like Korn and Slipknot denying that they're new metal. He starts doing live events. He makes a project to retrieve new metal lost media, which, with the help of Rainbow Knife, successfully finds a band called Simon Says and gets their music on streaming services for the first time. And while all this is going on, an interesting shift starts to happen. According to Google Trends, interest in new metal has now exceeded its previous peak in 2004, when Google began tracking. 2004 basically being the end of when new metal was originally relevant. You start to see a bunch of articles getting published about the new metal revival, which point to Kirk as a central figure in the revival of the genre. And in general, he's just a pretty non-controversial guy which made it all that more shocking for people to hear that he was facing jail time. It was on October 31st, Halloween, that he posted the following. This account may enter a period of inactivity, as I'm being indicted for securities fraud at 4 p.m. tomorrow. Stay tuned for further updates. Now, he's made joke tweets like this in the past, so to me, and probably most of the people who saw the tweet at that point, we just figured it was a joke. But then the next few exchanges start to sell people on it. What led up to this? WTF. According to the state of California, Securities fraud. Wait, hold up, what? I'm being indicted for securities fraud tomorrow. Wait, what's happening tomorrow? My indictment for securities fraud. This is so new metal in every aspect. It really isn't. I'm facing 25 years. Oh, so it's metalcore then. At this point now, I've got people sending me messages and tagging me asking to find out what's going on. Also, I had someone advise me to not listen to anything he tells me because apparently doing so could potentially cause me to get sucked up into the case. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's just what I'm told. In any case, now you start to get more people who think his tweet isn't a joke after all, it's really happening. 
I see a few people theorizing that maybe it's a crypto scam because, you know, he's a podcaster with a big Twitter account. So, you know, not entirely an unreasonable assumption. But then something else happens that you would never in a million years see coming. And this is what really, really starts to sell people. Crazy ass moments in fictitious brokerage accounts. I've been advised not to speak on the details of this case at this time. Thank you. Four men indicted for defrauding global financial services company based in Menlo Park, California of over $2 million. That's right, there actually was a real securities fraud case that was unsealed within hours of Kirk's post, with the alleged crime occurring in California, where Kirk lives. In this case, four men had been charged with securities fraud and money laundering. To keep it very brief, what they were basically doing is taking advantage of instant deposits which allow you to trade with funds before your money clears from the bank. But the bank accounts they would use for these deposits were almost empty. So the financial institutions would front the money with the expectation that the money is coming back, but then the money doesn't come back. And they would use stock options to transfer the instant deposit money to good bank accounts and keep it. It also named the four men charged. Eduardo Hernandez, also known as Ghost. Christopher Flagg, also known as Venus. Daquan Lloyd, also known as Payday. Corey Ortiz, also known as Jefe. Now, as far as I know, nobody knows Kirk's last name, and for that matter, Kirk could be a pseudonym. But I don't know, man, you look at Kirk, he doesn't strike me as a Hernandez or an Ortiz. Certainly not a Daquan. <laughs> Christopher Flagg, maybe? I mean, he could be a Christopher Flagg. But at this point, there's no pictures of the men available. He doesn't post anything else until the next day. It's been the honor of a lifetime administrating this account. Thank you for everything. Goodbye. And attached is a photo of the Los Angeles Superior Court. And as the band team pointed out, there's no Google reverse image search of this. So it's probably a picture he took himself. Although honestly, I can't remember the last time Google reverse image search actually gave me what I was looking for, so... So now between these posts and his uncharacteristic lack of other posts, now you have people who originally thought it was a bit thinking, hey, maybe this actually is a real thing. Now you've got millions of views on these posts with a lot of people convinced that the admin of the crazy ass moments in New Metal History account might actually be going to jail for white collar crimes. Although in this period, you do have a few people who put the pieces together. Several pointed out that this particular courthouse that he showed isn't the court that this case would be tried in. There is also the YouTuber Toastify, who calculated based on previous tweets that Kirk's age would not match up with any of the defendants. But it doesn't really matter who's saying what to the contrary. You do have a lot of people playing along with it just because the idea of it is pretty funny. But then you had so many people who were just genuinely convinced. Like, I can't remember the last time I had this many people message me to cover a story as it's unfolding. And then after that courthouse picture, we've got radio silence for another day. But then on November 2nd, Crazy Ass Moments of New Metal History would do a free Kirk stream. Of course, Kirk didn't need to be freed because he was there in the stream. Yes. Yeah! So, rumors about my demise have been greatly exaggerated. I'd like to explain my thought process for making, for making this post. I was sitting right here, and I thought to myself, wouldn't it be yeah! funny to post this account may enter a period of inactivity as I am being yeah. indicted for securities fraud at 4 p.m. tomorrow. Stay tuned for further updates. This, this indictment dropped on October 31st, the exact same day, almost at the exact same time. And, and listener, viewer, I want you to know right now, I am not that clever. I'm pretty clever, but I'm definitely not clever enough to, uh, to time out my fib, my big fib, with an actual Department of Justice case, okay? He would clarify once again on Twitter. For anyone checking in, I want to be crystal clear about this, because I am not in the business of lying. I'm good. The whole thing was a bit. It was a blast, but it's time to get back to the task at hand, which is platforming new metal bands, young and old, that deserve the attention. I spoke to Kirk a bit after this, and it was basically just as I thought. Originally, he was just making a throwaway joke tweet, and then it just suddenly got way, way out of control. All because, by sheer dumb luck, the thing he was joking about wound up actually happening, just to other people. He made the tweet and had zero intention of actually making this a bit that runs for a few days, but then he saw literally millions of people are getting weirdly invested in this. 
So he said, fuck it, let's have some fun. I guess on one hand, it's a bit of a disappointing ending, but at the same time, it's not because I'm glad Kirk's not in jail. But anyway, that's the story of new Metal Securities Fraud. If you like this video, turn on notifications and check out my video about the mystery behind Slipknot's song, Purity.